Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Totally Awesome Podcast, the worst podcast you've ever heard, so bad it might make you bust out into a random musical as you tap out. Uh, I am your host, as always, the one and only Josh Ageddon, and here today, I'm going to be discussing a movie that I saw yesterday, Joker Fully Adieu, Joker 2 Fully Adieu, Electric Boogaloo, uh, yeah, I saw it. Um, and I have various thoughts and opinions on this movie, um, and I honestly don't even know where to begin, because right off rip, this is the most perplexing, baffling movie I have ever watched, and not in a good way. And also, this is going to be absolutely spoilerific. Uh, no stone will be left unturned, unless I forget to talk about something, which is very likely. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a spoiler-heavy, uh, discussion, review, uh, of this movie. So if you have not seen this movie, uh, watch this video anyway. Uh, do, save your money, don't, do not go watch this movie, it's not very good. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, save your money, save your money, um, Literally, the best part of me going to see this movie yesterday is I actually went on a date yesterday. Me and this girl I met named Candace went to go see this movie, and while I probably, I definitely could have picked a better movie for us to go see, we could have seen Deadpool and Wolverine again, uh, but w we had a good time despite this movie, and then we went to go get some dinner, and we had we had a good time. Uh, I enjoyed hanging out with Candace. Uh, but even she was like, yeah, that movie was weird. So, yeah, Joker Fully Adieu is a thing that happened. That's honestly how I felt after watching this movie. That was a thing that happened. So much so that after I got home... Uh, before I went to bed, I rewatched the first Joker movie. And full disclosure, uh, the 2019 Joker movie is my favorite movie ever. It is the best movie that I have ever seen. In fact, when I first saw that movie, back when it came out in 2019, after coming out of the theater, I immediately turned around, went right back into the theater, and watched it again. I watched it two times in one night. That's how much I loved it. And I've never done that with a movie uh, I have not done that with a movie before or since. I I love that movie, and honestly, I love the first movie even more. Because I respect this movie, the first movie, for A, wanting to exist, <laughs> which is a huge problem with the second movie. Um, and also, the first movie had passion behind it. There was a vision and there was execution to said vision that worked wonders. And, yeah, um, Joker Fully Adieu, as I just uh, stated, I have never seen a movie that did not want to exist so badly. Before. Like, I, <laughs> this movie is angry that it was made. Like, the entire time I was watching it, I was like, this movie just... It's not going anywhere. Not much is happening. Again, perplexing. Like, this is the strangest, most confusing movie I've ever watched. Like, the first Joker movie is strange and perplexing, but in a good way as far as, like, the way it plays out, it, it, there's a lo it leaves a lot to interpretation. Not everything is simple. It's very complex. You have to put your thinking cap on. And that's a good way. That's a good way to confuse people where they're not like what in the what the hell did i just watch where they're like oh this is something i'm gonna have to think about and digest that like that's a good thing this is the bad kind of confusing where i'm just befuddled i have never been more befuddled by a movie and i'm just like and yes when i came out of the movie yesterday i i didn't hate it i was just more confused than anything else not confused by the movie in, in, as in, like, oh, I didn't understand what was happening. I understood what was happening. My confusion wasn't with, like, oh, I just don't understand this movie. I'm just not smart enough to comprehend the vast brilliance of Joker Fully Adieu. No, my confusion was, why was this movie made? Why did the, why Why is this happening? Like, literally every decision that was made in this movie... It's not just that it was bad or done poorly. 
This is the most incorrect movie I've ever seen. Like, every decision in this movie was just incorrect. And contradicts and apparently has a bone to pick with the first movie. But yeah, when I first saw it yesterday, I didn't hate it. I was like, it was it was alright. Um, today, I like it a little bit less. And it's going to be one of those movies where the more time passes, the more I'm going to dislike it. Kind of like uh, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. When I first saw Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker, when it came out, I loved that movie. Uh, I, and then I just started, the more I thought about it, I liked it less and less and less and less. And now, to me, Episode Nine is a huge, fumbled, mixed bag. I, st I, st I don't hate Rise of Skywalker. It's just, oh, what could have been. This movie, in a year, uh, if I even remember this movie, I will probably hate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, again, I just don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. For starters, when this movie was first announced, that they, oh, they were doing a sequel, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, the first one doesn't need a sequel, it's very it could it very much functions as a standalone movie with a conclusion and a character arc. Uh, it was the origin story for a uh, different interpretation of the Joker, the one of the most infamous villains in the history of fiction. It was very open and shut. So this movie was announced, and I was like, okay. And then the news came out that it was a musical, and to everyone that was an immediate red flag. Me personally, I musicals are just not my thing. I just, it's, it, I, I just find them strange and very theater kidsy, and I very I I do not consider myself a theater kid. It but it, like I, I it's just not my thing. There are some musicals that I like. Like I love Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That's that's a really good movie. Um, but. Like, it was just like, that's a weird direction to take. That is a very strange choice. And then Lady Gaga was announced as Harley Quinn, and I'm just like, okay, it makes more sense that they're doing a musical now. Um, and, but still, weird. And the tra the trailers honestly made me feel less uneasy about it, because honestly, the trailers made the movie appear to be that this movie was going to be Joker meets Harley Quinn, and then through their shared madness, they're going to just rip Gotham a new asshole. They were going to cause chaos while in their minds they're like on they're on stage performing a musical while in reality they're just they're just raising absolute cain in Gotham City and but that's not what we got. <laughs> that is not these trailers were very misleading. Uh but let me backtrack a little bit. There are there are a couple positives that I would like to point out before I tear this movie a new asshole. Um, for one, the acting is superb. Joaquin Phoenix is amazing. He's one of the best actors today. And despite the script he was given, he's very good in this movie. I think he was better in Joker 1 because he had better stuff to work with, like infinitely better. But he, he did his best. He did his absolute damnedest. And this movie was firmly on his shoulders. Uh, whereas that wasn't a problem in the first movie because he had, you know, something to work with. In this movie, he's doing a, a balancing act with nothing to work with. Imagine juggling nothing and still dropping everything and it becoming a massive disaster. <laughs> That that's that was Joaquin Phoenix's task in this movie, and I do not envy him. But damn it, he clocked on to work. And Lady Gaga was very good as Harley Quinn for the maybe twenty minutes that she was on screen, which is a problem I'll get to later. Um, everyone in the movie did a really good job. They they weren't given. It's not even that they were given bad shit to work with. They were given nothing to work with. Um, and the cinematography is insane. Like, this is a beautiful-looking movie. The the directing and, like, the aesthetic and, like, the technical aspect of this movie is top-notch. The same level of quality, if not even better, than the first Joker movie. This is a beautiful-looking, sounding, and well, very well-acted movie. 
So all the pieces are there. And there are scenes here and there that are very good. Uh, like, I, a lot of people have said, like, the best scene in the movie is when uh, Gary Puddles, the, uh, the, the midget, takes the stand and is talking to Joker, who's representing himself in court. Their conversation, it's a good conversation, and it is a good part of the movie, although I do have a problem with it, which I'll get to later. Um, which, yeah, stuff like that is fine. And every once in a while, it does get a little violent, and the violence is entertaining. But that's that's honestly it as far as the positives. Like, again, my biggest positive from this whole ex experience is I had a good date out of it. Me and Candace had a good time, even though we were just confused and befuddled by what we were watching. Um, so I guess I'll get to the rest of this pile. <laughs> The, this movie absolutely falls apart with the script and the story. Um, because there isn't really one. Like, this movie honestly feels like a two-hour-long epilogue. Because most of this movie... Like, 70% of this movie is just r talking about, recapping, and attempting to recontextualize what happened in the first movie. Another 20% of the movie is just musicals that are very weird and out of place. And 10% is some is actual new stuff. And the new stuff is not good. But yeah, most of this movie is just them talking about the first movie. And it, it's just... This whole movie is so pointless. And I just... Again, I don't... you It, is, it, it makes me think that everyone involved was like, why did the first movie have to make a billion? <laughs> so, it's like they're wishing that the first movie flopped so this one didn't have to exist. Because, again, all they all this movie does is talk about the first one. There's barely any progression. There's a ton of regression. And I'm just like, movie, I saw the first one. You, stop talking about the first one. Like, I've never seen a sequel be so obsessed with the first one. Like, and a sequel should use the first whatever as a reference point, a, 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 a foundation and a jumping off point to do something new. But this movie is like in love. It is the most love-hate affair with its own source material and its own first movie. It's, it's so weird. It is so weird and baffling. Because, and, and this movie also is insanely boring like like there were multiple times where i'm just like can we stop just wandering around arkham asylum and and can we just can something happen can something happen there was a lot of walking and talking and reminiscing and more talking and explaining and verbiage and it's just the first movie was a slow burn and it did not have that much action in it. But what the first movie did expertly well was build tension. It built tension like a guitar string. And when it got to the moments of violence, it was impactful and shocking. Because like the tension was slowly being raised until you got the catharsis of whatever happened. Like uh, the, the, the iconic Murray Franklin show scene. Every, like, the second that starts, there's just, you know something bad's gonna happen. And the dread and the tension just coincide, and it just amplifies itself until the crescendo of Joker pulling out the gun and blowing Murray Franklin's brains out. And I remember when I saw that in the theater, everyone in the theater was like, Oh, God! Oh, God, no! It was so well done. And the same thing when he shot those three, uh, Wall Street assholes in the subway that were accosting that random woman. It was built up so well, and it was shocking when it happened. There was build-up and payoff. Uh, in this movie, there's nothing. There, There's just talking and talking, and some singing and singing, and things just happen, and, and things just don't happen. And then there's a little bit of violence sprinkled in here and there. And, and, and then we go back to nothing. Like, the Joker barely does anything violent in this movie. 
all of the violent things that Joker does to other people are just delusions. Like, I, I, th is this like the first Joker anything where the Joker himself doesn't kill anybody? Like, they made a Joker movie where the Joker doesn't do anything Jokerish, which was another thing that I really have a problem with this movie. Like. Like, there were so many moments, especially towards the end of the first Joker movie, where it was like, that is such a Joker thing to do. Like, the cat and mouse games that he would play in that first movie. Like, the scene where Gary, the midget, is r trying to run away and, and uh, Joker's like, bah! and scares him. That's so something the Joker would do. And, of course, he can't escape Arthur's apartment because he's too short to reach the lock to let himself out. So now the Joker has to come over and unlock the door and you have no idea if he's going to kill this midget or not. And it's just this playful cat and mouse nightmarish scenario where you're just biting your teeth like, oh my god, please don't kill the midget. And it's just such a wonderful moment. And and also like later on when, he, when the Joker's running from those two police officers and he leads them to a subway where a bunch of people are wearing clown masks, he disappears in the crowd by wearing a clown mask and causes a brawl on the subway that leads to those officers be getting the shit beat out of. Yeah, he didn't do it intentionally, but he took advantage of a situation and he saw it worked out for him and he skedaddled in uh, the most happy, bizarre, badass way ever. It was such a Joker m moment where he was manipulate like purposefully or accidentally. He was manipulating a situation to maximize, ma to maximize it to get out of said situation scot-free. There was a problem arising, and a solution just happened to fall right into his lap, and he went with it with a smile on his face. That was so joke. Like, he's not... This Joker is not like the intellectual mastermind, the criminal genius. But the way he was taking advantage of situations and, and being in situations that were very cat and mouse was still so jokery. And, like, when he shot Murray and he went over and was, like, mugging for the camera and he was like, always remember, that's life, before getting tackled by cops. That was so Joker. And, like, the very end of the movie when, after he allegedly kills the person, the, the black lady he was talking to and he has the bloody uh, footprints while he's walking down the hallway, he's dancing and getting chased around Tom and Jerry style by the guards of that asylum that's so Joker. It's a game to him. Nothing matters. His ethos that he develops, the ethos of the Joker that he develops throughout the first movie, especially the line where he says, "No, I'm I'm not a part of that revolution. I don't I don't I don't I don't believe in anything." That is so Joker. That is so nihilistically the Joker, and it was perfect. It was perfect. There's nothing like that in this movie. There's no cat and mouse anything. There's no he's like again he was like not he it wasn't that he was an idiot in the first movie he was just a mentally ill uneducated regular guy that went insane and became the joker in this movie he's a dumbass he's a, he's an idiot with some slight joker isms like i mentioned like that i had a problem like the, the one scene people are talking about where he talks to gary where, where he's representing himself uh, it doesn't work for him as the Joker because, for one, the, my problem with it is, again, the Joker is... The Joker's supposed to be smart. Or, at the very least, able to weasel his way out of situations that he has no business weaseling his way out of, like he did in the first movie. In this movie, like he's representing himself in court, and the first thing he does for several minutes is make jokes about the fact that Gary Puddle's last name is Puddles. And I was like, this is the scene people are talking about? I I, I don't know if you guys should know this, but if you're rep if you are ever representing yourself in court, making fun of the last name of the witness probably won't endear yourself to a jury. I'm just saying, I'm no lawyer. I can't speak legalese, but I just wouldn't do that if you were ever in a scenario where you were representing yourself in court. And just everything he did, and like this weird, this weird, 
lawyer voice he was using while he was uh, contemplating his sins from the past movie. And he was having a conversation with this midget who has a weird last name. His name is Puddles? He's a liar. He, his name isn't Puddles. No one's like. I hated all of that. Him talking like this. I just... It, it was like... Oh, the Joker does weird things because he's the Joker because he's weird. That's what that came off as. That that came off as someone who understands that the Joker is weird, full stop. And that that is their understanding of the Joker. He's just weird. There's no, no, not That is the most surface level. Oh, we'll just have the Joker have put on a funny voice. I hated it. I hated that. Also, again, you're representing yourself in front of a jury doing a weird lawyer voice. Is it going to endear yourself to the jury? Just saying. Just stuff like that. Like, the, he wasn't even... In the first movie... I feel I take a shot every time I say, in the first movie. But, like, he became the Joker by the end. And I know... First, I want to mention this real quick. Todd Phillips, ever since the first movie came out, has been trying to put this idea in people's heads. Oh, Arthur isn't really the Joker. He's not the real Joker. This is just a story about a guy who went insane. And I'm just like, Motherfucker, you called the movie Joker. Both movies are called Joker. He is the Joker. Again, that just makes me feel like this movie didn't want to exist, and it hates that the first movie was as well received as it was, and just stuff like stuff like that, and and that leads to another problem, another huge problem that I have with this movie. No one does anything. Nothing happens in this movie except for the really shitty ending, which I'll discuss in a minute. But like nothing is accomplished. No one does anything in this movie. The Joker, Arthur, the, the, he do, he doesn't do anything. Like he he accomplishes nothing. I I I I talked about it a second ago, but Lady Gaga is Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn does nothing. She sets one room on fire, and steals one TV. That's it. That is it. That is all that Harley Quinn does in this movie. Or, I'm sorry, Lee. That is all she does in this movie. She Like, if, if you removed Harley Quinn from this movie, not much would change. Like, Margot Robbie was used better as Harley Quinn in every movie she's been in as Harley Quinn. Because, like, she was at the bare minimum used. Lady Gaga is just... I, I'm Lady Gaga... I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for something to happen. Hello? Knock, knock. Todd Phillips. Can I do something now? Oh, you want me to do a musical? Okay, I'll do a musical at number, I guess. That, she does nothing. She's so inconsequential. I Sure, you can say, oh, well, she manipulated the Joker. Well, at the end of the movie, he renounces being the Joker, so that manipulation, that angle that they tried to, sh to do in this movie, goes nowhere. This whole movie goes nowhere, except backwards. And again, like, I j I'm just so, why did they, th what, th every decision that they made in this movie was just wrong. This is the most incorrect movie I've ever seen. Like, this movie does not understand why people like the first one. The people who made this movie do not understand why the first one was popular and successful and made a billion dollars. And it is blatantly obvious uh, now, real quick, speaking of pointless and inconsequential, and if you remove them, nothing would change, apart from runtime, the musical numbers. Like, in a musical, like, the, the, the function of a musical is using music numbers or whatever to enhance the plot, advance the plot, or give a different, a creative way to peel back the layers of a character or, like, this is what's going on in their head. This is a way to do that. And I've like I mentioned uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers earlier. That movie is a classic. That movie's a masterpiece. It's really old, but it's great. 
and they use music to explore the emotions of what people are feeling that is relevant to the plot and advances it at the same time. This is the worst musical I've ever seen because the musical numbers in this movie are such afterthoughts and they clash so badly with the world that was established in this movie and the previous movie. Like, there was music in the first movie, but it wasn't a full-on musical, and th the music was used to enhance the sorrow and the despair of everything that was going on. Like, like th the music was used normally in the first movie. This, mu this movie, the musical numbers... Honestly, it felt like they were just commercial interruptions. They, it, there was like, the first time that they the, the, the musical number happened in this movie was like, okay, it was a little weird, but I, I, I was like, right, you know what, I'm willing to roll with it. But as time wore on and just more just randomly started happening, n none of the musical numbers were like different from the other ones. They all felt the same. They were all basically about the same... How many times do I have to sit through a musical number about how obsessed with each other Joker and Harley Quinn are? Every single musical number was about something that just happened, just being re-explained to us via song, or just them, again, reaffirming their affirmation towards one another. It was so repetitive and pointless and irritating at a point. Like the musical numbers got very annoying because they didn't uh, they didn't accomplish anything. They were a massive distraction that again, it was like we were watching a boring ass movie and all of a sudden, and we'll be right back to your boring ass pointless feature presentation after a few short commercial messages. That's honestly how all of the musical numbers in this movie felt. Like just random commercial breaks from the boring movie and then we would go back to the boring movie of boringness and boredom and nothing happening and wondering wh why I decided to take Candace to this movie for our first date. <laughs> uh, what a mess. What a mess. I, again, I, I just... I have never been so baffled coming out of a movie or thinking back on a movie a day later. Like, seri like if you took the musical numbers out, the movie would not dramatically improve, but it would be not as much of a slog to sit through. Like It felt like the, the musical numbers were just a complete afterthought, just tacked on because, I mean, we got Lady Gaga, and she's a singer, so she's got to sing. And it, this whole movie felt like someone was holding a gun to Todd Phillips's head and they were like bitch make a movie and Todd's like but I don't want to make a movie fine gosh you know what the joke's on you pal this honestly feels like Todd Phillips hates the world <laughs> like, he it, this whole movie feels like he hates that he had to make another one he hates that people like the first one. He hates that people were mad about the first one. Like, Todd Phillips hates everyone on Earth but Todd Phillips, it feels like. The man is an island to himself because he wishes that he lived on an island by himself so he wouldn't have to deal with the rest of mankind. That is the vibe I got from this movie. <laughs> that Todd, Todd Phillips hates Earth. He hates life on Earth. He was like, I just wanted to make a fun movie with a mess. Well, okay, maybe not a fun movie. I wanted to make a, a movie, a, an artistic movie that had the Joker in it. I, I, I had a vision. I had a plan. I had passion. And all of you fuckers ruined it. And this movie is my temper tantrum. I hate all of you. I don't care if this movie makes money. I didn't want to make it. You don't want to watch it. None of us are happy. <laughs> go, go watch it. Go, go enjoy my movie. Or don't. I don't care. That's honestly what this entire situation feels like. This feels like a tantrum. <laughs> this movie is a tantrum. 
Because again, nothing happens. Like, j honestly, this movie feels so circular in the most pointless way possible. The movie starts off with, with Arthur in Arkham and ends with him in Arkham. And, and, and he's in Arkham, gets abused by guards. He's not, he's like, people are like, oh, there's Arthur. You got a joke for us? And goes through the whole trial. He meets Harley Quinn. And by the end, they break up because he's renounced his persona as the Joker. He's just Arthur. So now he's just Arthur, except in an even worse place. And then he gets shanked by a random prisoner, and, and he's just dead now. What? What? <laughs> now I'm going to get into parts of this movie that actually just like, I was like, are you serious? Really? Are you serious? There were a couple parts where me and Candace were both just uncomfortable. By the way, before I get into that, uh, me and Candace were the only people in this theater. <laughs> this auditorium was empty. Mind you, when the first Joker movie came out, packed house. I can't remember if me and the the, the dipshit that I went to go see the movie with, who, I, who I'm no longer friends with, I, I can't remember if me and him saw it on opening night. Or like the day after opening night. But regardless, when we went to go see that movie, it was packed. And when we turned around and got a, a second ticket to go see it again, it was packed again. This showing, me and Candace were the only two people in the auditorium. And which, I, from what I've heard, there's a lot of empty auditoriums where this movie is playing. Like, there was a meme that was like, that, that I'll never forget that meme where it was like Goku and Vegeta are like we should go to a location where there's no people and then they edited it like I photoshopped Goku and Vegeta fighting in the auditorium during Birds of Prey the Harley Quinn movie because no one went to go see that movie that is just as applicable now for Joker Folia do because what I've heard is like this movie is bombing like crazy at the box office like it's <clears throat> the the amount of money that it needs to make in order to break even it hasn't even made a fourth of that. And I'll get more into the reception of this movie because that's part of the, the story here. But, like, not gonna lie, there, was, there were parts of the movie where I contemplated just leaning over and I'm just like, Candace, do you just want to leave? <laughs> because this is not good. Like, seriously, there were, there were parts of this movie, not because I was offended, but because I was bored and it was going nowhere and it was repetitive. And I was just like, what do I, why, what am I even doing here? This is such a waste of time. I, I contemplate, I seriously contemplated like asking Candace if she wanted to leave a couple times. I, I almost got up and walked out. But I stuck through it because I was curious as to how this was going to end. Um, WTF moment number one where I was like, that was so unnecessary and it made both me and, it made my skin crawl and it also made Candace's skin crawl. It's a little bit after Joker and Harley hit it off, and she somehow... Because, again, this movie also does the thing where Joker's an unreliable narrator, so you're not sure if what you're watching is real or a delusion. Although this movie does this, movie does this way more poorly. In the, 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 the way the first movie did it, honestly, was brilliant. The first movie... Basically, everything the first movie did was brilliant, and everything this movie tried to do, the sequel, sucked, and was just very ill-conceived, and did not work, and was done a hundred times better in the previous movie. The, the, is this real? Is this not real? Is this just a delusion? It was very poorly executed in this movie, to where it was like, where I'm, I'm not so much like, oh, is any of this real? Where I'm more just thinking, what the fuck is happening? I don't know how, but... Harley makes her way into Joker's prison cell and it leads to the single most awkward and weird sex scene ever. Because they're talking and they get really close and intimate and she puts Joker makeup on him and then they get real close and he takes his pants off, she spreads her legs and the part that made me go, oh, 
was when he was like, he's you, you, you can't see it, it's out of frame, but you can tell he's trying to put it in, and he looks at her and he's like, can you do it? And I'm just like, oh, 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 and then he starts humping her, she's clearly not enjoying it, and he's like, eh, eh. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Kill me now. Kill me now. <laughs> uh, my, I have never been more flaccid in my entire life. Like, my penis wanted to grow legs and run away. Like, I, I, I watched the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. And those sex scenes were awkward and weird, but hilarious because some idiot out there thought that that was sexy this blows all of that out of the water as far as what the fuck am I watching like it was so just ugh like I just ugh they should have been playing this scene to discourage people, like, you know what? Don't have sex unless you're married. And make sure you're in a clean room. This is the most effective don't have sex in the middle of a prison PSA I've ever seen. Because it was just so just... How could anyone possibly enjoy that? Just... Ugh. I felt unclean. I felt dirty. And not in a... Oh, I just watched something that was so messed up. No, I just watched something gross. That made me want to leave. And Candace was like, ugh. And after the movie, we were both like, that was the most awkward thing ever. And she was like, yeah, that was very, very weird and uncomfortable. And it somehow gets worse because later in the movie where the Joker's representing himself uh, in court, he makes a snide comment about those fat guards at Arkham and, of course, they're wa it's the trial of the century. Everyone's watching it, and the guards hear that comment. So when he gets back, they beat him up, and you don't see it, but it is, it is heavily implied that they rape him. I'm going to let that... I'm going to let... I'm going to pause and let that breathe for a second. There is a... Imply a heavily implied Joker rape scene where the Joker himself is booty raped. And that was the second time I was like, what in the actual fuck? Okay, that right there was cheap heat. That was the most cheap heat I've ever seen in a movie. For those of you that don't know what, what I mean by cheap heat, I'm a wrestling fan, and it, the, what, the job of the bad guys, the heels in wrestling, is to get heat, to, to do things that will make the audience hate them and boo them so the babyface, the heroes, can beat them up and the crowd will cheer, and that's how wrestling works. Sometimes in wrestling, the heel will get cheap heat. Which means it's an easy way to, to make the crowd dislike you. Very very low brow, no effort. Like, basically, like if you've ever watched a wrestling show and the heel just randomly, for seemingly no reason, insults the, the sports team of whatever city they're in, and the crowd boos because how dare you talk about the sports that we like in a way that we don't like. It's very easy cheap heat that doesn't really accomplish anything other than getting the crowd more involved and it's just kind of lame although it works every time because people are stupid but this was the equivalent of that the, really did we really need to have the joker get raped really like that was so unnecessary that was so just beyond... Un it was honestly kind of tasteless. And the worst part is the guards that raped him. That's the la that's like one of the last times you see them in the movie. They, they get no comeuppance. Like the, the subway dipshits in the first movie. They were being assholes. They were accosting this woman. They beat up Arthur. And he fucking shoots them. Like he gets revenge on them. Th those deeds do not go unpunished. 
But in this movie, he gets ass raped and that gets unpunished. What? So you took the character in the first movie where the whole point was you the, the whole point of the first movie is basically we should treat each other better. Like the world is unfair to people with mental illnesses and that can create a monster. So you decided to take the character the spearhead of that message, put him in this movie and have him be butt raped for no reason. Are you serious? Are you serious, Todd Phillips? That was that was lame. That's one of the main things I hated about this movie. Not like you can this, this is going to be such a weird thing to say. You can use rape in a movie in a way where it works, where it builds to something or it like it allows you to understand the character or to to empathize with a character. This just felt like it just happened out of nowhere for no reason. I mean, there was a reason he talked shit about the guards and got what he fucking deserved. I guess. But it just felt very mean-spirited. It just felt like, oh, this character that you thought was a badass in the first movie, well, he got butt-raped. He's not so badass now, is he? And I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, the, the awkward-ass sex scene between Joker and Harley that was very hard to watch was the first time I went, what the fuck? This implied rape scene was another moment where I was like, what the fuck? And then the ending was the final time I went, what the fuck? But before that... So basically, after the Joker gets booty raped, uh, he, a friend that he made in Arkham Asylum, who's a f who's a fan of like, who's trying to emulate Arthur and become like not become the Joker, but he's trying. He sees Arthur as a figure of resolve and strength. So after he Arthur gets raped, he's trying to stand up for him, and he's standing up to the guards, and one of the guards turns around and strangles the dude to death off camera. And after getting raped and being right next to his friend that he inspired who gets strangled, honestly, because of him inspiring him, or at least that's how Arthur feels, he goes to court the next day and this is when he's like, you know what? There's no such thing as a Joker. I'm Arthur. It was a performance. I, I killed all those people. Punish me. I just want all this to be over with. He gives up. And completely goes back on everything the first movie set up. And it doesn't even make sense. Because in the first movie, he's not putting on a charade at the end. He, he is a... In, in the first movie, he goes from a mentally ill guy and slowly transforms into a psychotic, murderous lunatic by the end of the movie. That is not an act. That is not a performance. But in this movie, they try to spin it at the beginning as, oh, he has a split personality. Arthur didn't kill those people. The Joker did. Which, I mean, fine. Honestly, I, feel, I was thinking when they started going that route, especially with the opening animation at the beginning, I was like, that's kind of cliche. But then they do a complete 180 on that. And then they, which makes, like, why even make that a plot point in the first place if you're just going to say, yeah, that's that's not a thing. That, that was a red herring. This is how not to do a red herring. Um, it was like, yeah, I don't have a split personality. And then he goes a step further and he's like, and I'm not actually the Joker. I just got mad one day. I just snapped. I'm, I, I, like... I made some mistakes, and I should pay for them. Motherfucker, that's not what happened. Like, this movie is... It, this movie feels like it's not even canon with the first one. The mo This movie feels like a sequel to a Joker movie that didn't happen. Where it was all an act. It all was a facade, a charade. Which, in the first movie, it wasn't. Like, he, he became this... 
he became this lunatic that at the same time was spurred on by like how iconic it was to other people around him. The legend of that clown who killed those three subway guys and then him revealing it was me on the Murray show, it all happened simultaneously and organic and organically and it fed into one in one another until where it exploded at the end of the movie causing that large scale riot. Whereas in this movie they're acting as if oh yeah the Joker like oh yeah Arthur was just putting on on an act which that's not what happened. That is literally not what happened. Todd Phillips, did you watch your first movie? Did anyone who worked on this movie watch the first one? Did anyone who worked on this movie understand the first one? Because it feels like a sequel to a Joker movie that's similar, but did, that did not happen. It's like some weird alternate universe where a different Joker movie happened, but we got this sequel in the wrong universe. It's so weird. This whole thing is so weird. Like, all of this is just... Can you tell why I'm so baffled and perplexed? Nothing. None of this makes any sense. Ugh, this is so just confusing as to who, like, wh wh why bother? Why even bother? You're, de you're deconstructing things that were never constructed in the first movie. And this honestly is why I honestly feel... Because a lot of people are saying that this movie ruins the first Joker movie, which I can kind of get that, but when you think about it, and really, like, peel back the logic, this Joker Folia Do movie, honestly, doesn't even affect the first Joker movie. Because... What it's referencing feels like the first Joker movie, but the way they do it, it like it doesn't even make sense. Like it doesn't even feel like canon to the first movie. And also, like they have Zazie Beetz's character Sophie come come back to this movie for one scene where she talks about uh, what happened in the first movie, and she starts talking about things that she should not know what happened. And like there's even a part where Harley Quinn when they, when she first meets Arthur. She does the the handgun to the head thing that no one else saw between except for Arthur and Sophie in the first movie. So how does Harley know about the the handgun to the the head bit from the first movie? She wasn't there for that. Only two people know about that little gesture, and that's Arthur and Sophie. So when you think about it, this movie is like honestly by its own admission by its own execution not even canon to the first movie because it doesn't even make any sense like the timeline just doesn't add up characters know things that they should not know so that honestly right there just disqualifies it from being a sequel to me like honestly this is more of a mean-spirited parody of the first movie than a sequel a, a mean-spirited parody that is also an epilogue of sorts that doesn't even make sense. This is so weird. This is... This is... Like, this is... Like... Such a bad idea for a movie. And again, I, I re-watched the first Joker movie last night, and this stupid sequel makes me respect and enjoy and love the first one more. In my mind, there is no sequel. The, the first Joker movie, that's it. This shit is some weird alternate universe almost parody that does not like the first Joker movie. This Joker movie is like the bitter ex-girlfriend that is making up shit about the first Joker movie. That's what this feels like. I, I, I keep saying it, but it's just so bizarre it is so bizarre but i i said it a minute ago but i'll, I'll get into it the, the final what the fuck moment of the movie at the end after he's renounced his uh identity as the joker and he's like i'm arthur i'm frumpy dumpy little arthur I, who wouldn't hurt a fly i'm just sad woe is me Throw me away and bury the key underneath the prison. Put me, Give me the electric chair. Put me before a firing squad. I'm sad. Uh, well, the bomb goes off in the courtroom, so he gets freed. But uh, and the, the bomb, I guess, went off because some jo super, uh, Joker superfan fanatics were like, 
trying to uh, uh, rescue him from the court so he can go back to being the Joker, but he runs away from them. And he reunites with Harley, but she breaks up with him because she's like, what we had was a fantasy. I loved the Joker, and you said he's not real, so bye. And the funniest part was she starts singing, and even and even Arthur's like, can you please stop singing? And I'm like, the, for, for the first time, you've related to the audience. For the first time in this movie, you have related to the audience. Please stop singing. Which, I just, that was unintentionally funny. Um... So then he, after Harley leaves him, he will he surrenders to the cops, goes back to Arkham, and then he runs into um, this random Arkham inmate who's who was kind of mean mugging him a little bit throughout the movie, just at random at random points in the movie. Like this this random guy is just kind of looking at him like almost like he wants almost like he wants to be the one who gets to rape Arthur. That's the way he was looking at him. He goes up to him, starts telling him a joke, and then shanks and kills Arthur. And then as Arthur's dying, the, the background starts getting blurry. And this dude gives himself a Glasgow smile. He starts carving a smile into his face and laughing maniacally. Because he's the real Joker. I'm sorry, what? Huh? If the implication is is that this is the origin of the Heath Ledger Joker. This is officially one of the dumbest movies of all time. This is a completely different universe from The Dark Knight. If this dude is the Heath Ledger Joker, then the Heath Ledger Joker in The Dark Knight is 60-something years old, which is fucking impossible. And if he's not... And he just, and if it's just a reference to the Heath Ledger Joker, then that's just dumb. And if I, I, I'm just perplexed, befuddled, just confused. I, I, I have, I have been gobsmacked. I've been transoggled. That is a word. Look it up. And honestly, like th this movie didn't really have anything going for it, aside from cinematography and the acting. I would criticize the story if there was one. But the ending of this movie, like from the second the guards booty rape Arthur to the end, it is just a massive middle finger to everyone. It's a middle finger to the people that loved the first Joker movie. It's a middle finger to people who hated the first Joker movie. It's a middle finger to everyone that was involved with the first Joker movie. It's just a middle it's a middle finger to people who like movies. Like this was Todd Phillips flipping himself off in a mirror. That's what this was. I have never seen a movie that is so mad that it's a movie. I've never seen a movie that is so just against the art form of movies before. This was so weird. This is going to be a weird reference, but there is a Marilyn Manson album. I, I know I have to I have to find a way to bring up Marilyn Manson in every video I do. I know, but but his album, The Golden Age of Grotesque, ends with the track called Obsequi, The Death of Art. That is this movie. <laughs> this movie is where art goes to die. The art form of movie was just so shat on. This movie didn't so much shit on the Joker as it shat on just the idea of film. People who want to go see movies. Like, this, is, this movie is mad that movies exist. And it, it is just baffling like just wow everything about this movie was wrong <laughs> every uh, movies are great it's a great art form the first joker movie is great made a billion dollars this movie this movie shouldn't exist especially considering how anti-film this movie is how ashamed of itself this movie is this was sad. 
Not sad as in, oh, that was a depressing movie, like the first one, where it was depressing, but it was good, because it made sense. This movie just felt like self-flagellation. And the reception and reaction to this movie has been brutal, to say the least. A lot of people are saying that this feels like uh, Todd Phillips. Because, uh, you know, he's a part of the media establishment. Like he, He's in Hollywood, which means he rubs shoulders with the people, like the, the big time movie critics. You know, the super he head so far up their own ass that they can taste their colon type of people. We're like, it is, it is a movie, but is it film? Is it art? Those kinds of people. And some of those people were mad about the first Joker movie because... Does this movie align with our values? What will our stockholders think of this movie? Think of the children. Those people... Uh, had a stick up their ass about the first movie. And this movie feels like Todd Phillips was like... This feels like an apology to those people in movie form. But the funny thing about it is those critics that it feels like Todd Phillips was apologizing to, those critics hate this movie even more than the first. And the first movie, like, and it wasn't like critics hated the first movie. Some critics hated it. Some critics thought it was okay. Some critics loved it. Whereas the general audiences, for the most part, loved the first Joker movie. There were some people who were like, this is just a ripoff of Taxi Driver. Which is not wrong. But a lot of people loved the first Joker movie. My, myself included. It's still my favorite movie. It is still just a mind-blowingly amazing movie, in my humble opinion. And that's, it's honestly become, over the past, like, decade, honestly, ever, especially, like, the real, like, just pinnacle moment of this was when uh, The Last Jedi came out, where the disparity between critics and audience just became an issue, where... If the critics love it, the audience will hate it. If the critics hate it, the audience will love it. And we got a teeny bit of that with the first Joker movie, although, again, not every critic hated the Joker movie. Some loved it. I mean, it had a mostly pot... It had, like, a 60... Upper 60% score on Rotten Tomatoes, which isn't great, but it's not awful. It was kind of a middling response on Rotten Tomatoes, which just means... Some critics hated it, some critics thought it was alright, some critics loved it. It was a mix. Joker Folia Ado, uh, ha the, both the audience and the uh, critic score are almost identical. They're in the, the low to mid 30s. This movie is so bad that critics and audiences are united in their disgust and disdain. That 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 is that tells you everything you need to know. What shocked me the most though is the cinema score rating. For those of you that don't that don't know, okay. Cinema score is basically the Rotten Tomatoes for audiences because Rotten Tomatoes uh is an aggregate of all different kinds of movie critics just uh, the, the consensus of the critics boiled down to one number that is Rotten Tomatoes. If you want more more detail, more analysis, you can click on their individual reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. That that's how it works. Cinema score is similar except more geared towards audiences. What they do is they pull audiences as they're leaving the theater. And Cinema score uh, grades, they do letter grades, are usually very forgiving and kind to movies because it's polling the general audience. The most people, most regular people don't care about cinematography. They don't care about acting. They go to a movie to have a fun time. And, like, some really, really bad movies have decent cinema score ratings because, again, like, the general audience doesn't really care about the script, doesn't really care about... They don't go to a movie to analyze it. They go to a movie to have fun and eat popcorn and drink soda. That's what people go to a movie for.
That's what most people go see movies for. Analyzing film, critiquing film, picking out things that work, picking out things that don't work, can, like seeing how it was constructed is relatively niche. Like what I'm doing is relatively niche. Most people don't look at movies this way. For example, uh, Morbius, a movie that sucks ass. I, I actually did watch Morbius not too long ago. And I thought the first half was okay, and the second half just ruined it. Uh, Morbius, I think, has a C. Is it, It's either a C minus, a C, or a C plus. Which, I mean, it is rare that a movie gets lower than a B on cinema score. It just doesn't happen very often. Another example is The Marvels, which I have not seen, but I've heard it's atrocious. Uh, I think it got a B... It either got like a B minus or a C plus. Madam Web, uh, which I I have a prefer I have a perverse interest in seeing because I've heard it is so bad it's hilarious. It's like the room of superhero movies. That movie has a C on Cinema Score or a C minus. Joker Folie Adieu has a D, a D, which is the lowest Cinema Score rating for a comic book movie, or comic book adjacent movie, of all time. That indicates overwhelming dislike. That, that, that made my jaw drop when I saw that. People hate this movie. Like, <laughs> like, like they, they, people did not like Morbius. People did not like Madam Web. People did not like the Marvels. But those movies were seen as just kind of like train wrecks. Like, the just, oh my god, that is a mess. That is a shit sandwich right there. But people didn't hate or despise those movies. People despise Joker Folia do. I have not seen a movie be this hated in a long time. Uh, and again, I mentioned it earlier, like, I, I considered getting up and walking out during the movie... There, I keep hearing reports from numerous people. Like, I'll, I'll like, every once in a while, a, 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 a video will pop up on YouTube that I'll listen to, and they'll discuss that the movie they went to, and they saw it, there was either no one in the theater, or there was, like, one other person in the movie theater with them who halfway through got up and left. There are multiple reports of people getting up and leaving during this movie. Insane. Insane. And that, that just... This didn't have to be... It didn't have to be this way. And honestly, it's deserved. It is very well deserved. This movie is just... It's so angry that people like movies. It's so much hate... It hates the audience. It hates the critics. It hates the people involved with the making of the movie. It hates that this movie exists. It hates the first one. This is the most nihilistic, angry, misanthropic movie. This is the most misanthropic movie that I've ever seen. It hates everything. And everyone hates it. Only the snootiest, the snootiest, but is it art? I'm so smart! Only the most that kind of person likes this movie, from what I've seen. And they are few and far between. Like, the, the rejection this movie has gotten. And I mentioned earlier that, that it is flopping hard at the box office. Again, like, I can't remember the exact number, but the, the number it was supposed to reach in order to break even, it hasn't touched a fourth of that. No one is watching this movie. Mostly because I still think that most people who were interested in the sequel and loved the first Joker movie... The second they heard musical, they were like, I'm out. Nah, thanks. I'm good. I'll just watch the first one again. Bye. Fuck this. I'm good. I'm out. Good luck. Good luck. That moment during a podcast where you for a bit, literally leave your house and wander around for a second. <laughs> Outside. Uh, so, 
in conclusion, this movie's an ass sandwich. This movie sucks. Uh, I just don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say at this point. Uh, if you have not seen this movie, don't. Go watch the first one, and you'll you'll be happy. It's just, I I I have never seen anything like this. This is the this is the weirdest, most anti movie movie I think has ever been made. Uh, those are my thoughts on Joker. Fully adieu. Uh, if you have seen it, God rest your weary soul. Uh, comment down below. What did you think of this absolute travesty? Uh, I, I'm curious to see what, uh, you guys thought about this. Um, uh, I can't wait till Sonic 3 comes out. That's a movie that wants to exist. That is a movie that is excited to exist. And that is a movie where I feel, uh, it won't, you know, <laughs> come off like a scorned lover. <laughs> like, I feel like the director of that movie is like, I want fans to be happy. <laughs> Going from a, a, a movie franchise where they literally redid the character design to appease fans to this franchise where they made a movie specifically to piss off fans. It, it's just weird. What a weird time we're living in. But I can't wait to watch Sonic 3. That'll be one hell of a palate cleanser in, in December. Uh, so yeah, uh, I definitely absolutely will do a video on Sonic the Hedgehog 3 when that comes out. I'm excited for it. Uh, be looking forward to more fun stuff on TAW Gaming coming up soon. Like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Don't go watch Joker Folia do. Movies are fun, except for when they don't like that they're movies, which makes you makes you wonder why they were even made in the first place. Like, I'm subscribing, and all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Folia. <laughs>